بعد بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار I commence in the name of Allah the most gracious, the most merciful, as in salutations of prayers and peace upon the finality of prophets and messengers, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, his companions, and all who follow him in righteousness until the day of judgment. Indeed, beloved brothers and sisters, the best speech is the book of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, the Quran, and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad Salawatullahi wassalamu alayhi. And the worst of affairs are newly invented matters in terms of creed and worship, as every newly invented matter is something that leads humanity astray. And whatever leads humanity astray leads them away from the mercy of Allah. And we ask Allah in His infinite mercy and in His infinite grace to protect us from His wrath and to always grant us His mercy. I mean. So the book that inshallah ta'ala we're going to cover today inshallah ta'ala is called Dua, the weapon of the believer. Dua, the weapon of the believer inshallah ta'ala. And the purpose and the goal inshallah ta'ala is to be able to, as believers, arm ourselves with that very, mashallah, thing that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has given us that is going to aid us in the battle against shaitan, the battle against our desires, the battle inshallah ta'ala within this life, and the very thing that brings us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Dua is that source that brings us close to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, and we're going to see this within, mashallah, the presentation of the book that we're reading for this book club. Again, this is the book club. Um, this is the new topic. We hope that everyone inshallah ta'ala um, we'll do some reading ahead of time, inshallah. We will send out the links. I think the links for the book got sent out, but we will resend everything out, inshallah ta'ala, again, to make sure that everybody has it, as well as with the weekly schedule of what is going to be read, inshallah. And then we want it to always be, alhamdulillah, interactive after we give the summary of what is being presented, that uh, inshallah ta'ala, you guys can kind of chime in and uh, share your thoughts, inshallah ta'ala, your reflections and or questions. So the Shaykh he begins by mentioning that the word dua is mentioned in the Quran to signify a number of meanings. So when you look at the Quran, inshallah ta'ala, and you see this word dua, it's going to mean different things within the Quran. So he gives us a few, inshallah ta'ala, um, and he gives some examples in the book, but we're just going to give the, the few uh, meanings um, that is used for inshallah ta'ala. So he says the first dua can mean worship, dua can also mean the seeking of aid, right, and help. The third is dua can mean a request. Dua can mean a call. Dua can also mean praise. Dua can mean speech. And dua can mean a question that is being asked, inshallah ta'ala. And he provides the verses that gives us those proofs of how it's being used in each of those different circumstances, inshallah. He then goes on to say that Al-Khattabi radiallahu anhu, Allah be pleased with him, rahimahullah ta'ala, says that the meaning of dua is the servants asking his Lord for his help and asking for his continued support, right? And we're going to begin to see some overlap, right, inshallah ta'ala, between these concepts of the classic, right? So he says, Khattabi says, the meaning of dua is the servant asking his Lord for help and asking for continued support. So dua is when the person raises their hand and they're asking Allah wa ta'ala for help and continuous support. He says it's the essence or its essence is that a person 
shows their neediness to Allah and frees himself from any power or ability to change the matter or the circumstance which they are currently in. So we are presenting ourselves to Allah saying, Ya Allah, Antan Dhani, Wanahnu Fukara, right? Wanahnu Dhuafa, we are the poor, we are the ones in need, Ya Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, you are the one rich, rich, free of all need, right? We're turning to you broken. However, it is that I'm coming to you, Ya Allah. I can be completely broken, I can be just struggling, I can be mashallah going through little things in my life, but I know that without the assistance of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, there's no way that I can change any of these things in my life. Even with all of the effort that I put forward myself, if Allah doesn't assist me, then by myself, it will be too difficult to overcome these things. So I present myself in front of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, raising my hands, crying, pleading, and the likes. And he says that this is the character, this characteristic is the mark of servitude, right? And in it is the feeling of human submissiveness. He says the dua also carries the meaning of praising Allah. Alhamdulillah, subhanallah, that this, this is dua, this glorification and this praise and attributing to him, complete generosity is from those things also included within the meaning of dua. Ibn Qayyum, rahimahullah ta'ala, he defined um, dua as asking for what is a benefit to the person. So I'm asking for something that may be a benefit, or I'm asking Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to remove a harm from me, right? Before being afflicted by something, inshallah ta'ala. And we know that in that beautiful hadith of Nu'man ibn Bashir, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, dua huwa al-ibadah. That dua is worship, right? There's a weak hadith that we use, dua mukhu al-ibadah. Dua is the core of worship, right? This hadith is weak, but it is supported by this hadith that says, dua huwa al-ibadah. Dua is worship, right? SubhanAllah. So whenever we're supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know that we are engaged in worship, right? This is the worship of Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ghafir, verse number 60, he says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ He says, verily your Lord has said, call upon me and I shall respond to you. Allah Akbar. Allah is telling us, O oh slave, O oh servant, whether things are good, whether they are bad, call upon me and I shall respond to you. If you're looking for help and you're looking for assistance and you're looking for guidance, call upon me and I shall assist you, Allah saying. He says, He says, Reverently, those who are too arrogant to worship Allah and call upon Allah, will enter hell humiliated. Those who believe I can do it all by myself. I don't need anyone else. I don't need Allah. I don't need anyone to stop for Allah. Billah. Allah forbid, and we seek refuge in him from this, that those individuals will be left to themselves. And because of that, they will be from the people of the fire of hell. May Allah protect us. And he says that dua is one of the best ways to bring a worshiper close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? All glory and praise belongs to him. The dua is the method, inshallah ta'ala, how you get close to Allah. If you can imagine, brothers and sisters, that when we look to get close to one another, what do we do? We communicate with one another. We call each other. You know that a person loves you when they call upon you to check on you, to see how you're doing in the likes, inshallah ta'ala. Or you know a person loves you when you can call out, call, call them and you can, inshallah ta'ala, communicate with them and express to them whatever it is that you're going through. And inshallah ta'ala, they'll give you listening ears. Maybe they'll respond and help you, inshallah ta'ala, right? And what better form than turning to your Lord and conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is Samir al Ali. The one who hears everything and knows everything. The one who is qabiru ala kulli shay. The one who is capable of everything. There is nothing that Allah is incapable of doing, 
right? SubhanAllah, his power is infinite. Allahu Akbar, right? His power, his power is right. So there, there's no limit to his power, subhanAllah. And Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala, he reminds us in the Quran, who will hay? Who will hay? He is the ever living, right? As we know in Ayat al Kursi, Allah la ilaha illa who will hay qayyum, right? There is Allah, la ilaha illa who, Allah, there is no God worthy of worship except him. Who will hay qayyum? He is the ever living, the one who doesn't need to sleep, doesn't need to rest, right? SubhanAllah, the one who's going to be here forever. And in this verse, he's saying, who will hay? He is the ever living, la ilaha illa who, right? There is no God worthy of worship except him. He says, so call upon him while being sincere in this religion, sincere in your faith, inshallah ta'ala, right? Saying, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Praising Allah, saying all oh, praise and thanks belong to Allah, which is one of the most beautiful forms of dua. One of the most beautiful forms of supplicating is glorifying and praising Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And he says that dua is one of the best ways that a person can personally increase their iman, right? And through this, they begin to appreciate the names and the attributes of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Why? Because in dua, they begin to use those names and those attributes of Allah. Ya al Hadi, ihdini ila sirat al mustaqim, right? Oh, the one who delivers the guidance, guide me upon your straight path, right? Ya al-Razzaq, oh, the one who provides, right? Provide for me, inshallah ta'ala, the way you provide, mashallah, and give life to the earth, right? Allahu Akbar, right? Whatever it is that you want to ask that you can use these beautiful names and attributes of Allah to call upon him, inshallah ta'ala, using them, inshallah. Right, and then that it is also a powerful reminder of man's inherent incapability and Allah's unlimited power. Right, that this shows that when you call upon Allah using these names and attributes, that it shows I'm incapable. I'm incapable of providing for myself, inshallah ta'ala. I need you, Ya Allah, to send down your rizq, to send down your sustenance upon me, to send down your bounty, to send down your blessing, to continue to aid me and help me so that I can provide for myself and my family, inshallah ta'ala. Because without you, I can't have anything that I have. None of this would exist if it was just dependent upon me, subhanAllah. Right? Allahu Akbar, subhanAllah. So he says, the one, inshallah ta'ala, is uh, the one who makes dua sincerely is the person who makes dua while believing that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is hearing his dua, right? That when you're supplicating and asking from Allah, you are certain that Allah hears you. You are certain, as he says in the Quran, right? Um, as he says in the Quran, astajibalakum. I will answer you and I will respond back to you, inshallah ta'ala. You have that certainty and that iman in yourself, inshallah. Right? Such a person must also affirm that Allah's mercy is infinite, right? That that mercy is for everything and everyone, inshallah ta'ala, right? That his beneficence and his generosity touches all things, right? And the more that a person increases in the realization that we are impoverished and that we need Allah, right? And that we need the mercy of Allah the more that person will increase in their iman, right? The more I can humble myself, the more I can say to myself, Ya Abdul Razak, Ya Abba Samaya, you know, you are nothing, <laughs> right? You don't exist, you're nothing when it comes to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. You are in complete need. Subhana Rabbil Azim, I'm healthy today, I can be sick tomorrow, I have wealth today, I can be poor tomorrow, I have a family today, I can have nothing tomorrow. Right, subhanAllah, as in those stories that we learned in the in the last class talking about you know Ayyub and mashallah Yaqub, the subhana Rabbil Azim. You know, we can lose these things in the blink of an eye. Right? So being thankful, showing Allah, Ya Allah, I'm in need of you, subhanAllah. That helps to increase your iman because you as a slave understand your position on this earth, right? 
You're the precision on this earth is to worship Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and to depend upon him because you by yourself, you are nothing, right? And he says that Allah definitely answers the dua, the supplication of both the believer and the non-believer because he says both turn to Allah recognizing that only Allah can grant them what they desire. Right? And the fact that Allah answers the dua of the disbeliever does not in any way imply that he is pleased with them or that they will be saved from the fire. And here, this is an important point because you'll find many disbelievers say, well, I pray to God and God answers my supplication, right? So obviously I must be praying to the correct God, right? SubhanAllah. But Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala ar-Rahman which is one of his names and attributes, meaning the merciful. And then you have Ar-Rahim, which is another form of mercy, right? Ar-Rahman, he tells us that the mercy of Ar-Rahman touches every single human being. It's for all of mankind, for everything that exists, right? And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're worshiping the right thing. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala can be answering the dua of that person because maybe they've done something good. And their reward for that dua is here in this life, right? Allah answers it and he gives it to them. And so when they meet him yawm al qiyamah and they stand before him on the day of judgment, they say, yeah, Allah, you know, I asked you for the good. I did good in my life, yeah, Allah. That Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will tell them, well, I rewarded you for it. You got the house and the car and the wealth and the kids and the suit and whatever it is that you asked me for, I gave it to you. But you associated partners with me, which is an unforgivable sin, right? You turned away and rejected the revelation. But because I was just Allah, right? I answered your supplication and I gave you many good things in your life. But then that mercy of Ar-Rahim, that is specific to the believers. And this is why they are the ones who can say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adabana. Allah give us the good in this life, and Allah can answer that for them. Allah give us the good in the next life, right? Meaning paradise, forgiveness, mercy, and Allah can answer that for them as well. Wa qina adabana and save us from the punishment of the fire. And Allah can save them from the punishment of the fire. Why? Because they were people who said, La ilaha illallah. وَمَنْ قَالَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ مُخْلِصًا مِنْ قَلْبِهِ دَخَلَ جَنَّةِ And there are too many ahadith in the kitab of book, the book of Iman, in Sahih Muslim, that talk about the benefits of the one who says لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ and how these people will be people of Jannah. إِنْ سَرَقَ وَإِنْ زَانَ Right? كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهِ سَلَمْ إِلَى أَبَى ذَرْ Right? إِلَى أَبِي ذَرْ Where he says, even if they sin and even if they fornicate, even if they steal and even if they fornicate. And Abu, Abu Dhar was like, yeah, Rasulullah, even if they steal and fornicate, they go to paradise. And he says, in Kana, you know, in Kana, in Zana or in, in Salaq, yes, if they steal or if, even, even if they fornicate, right? Because of the sincerity of La ilaha illallah, right? But here the key word is sincerity. Here the key word is sacrifice. Here the key word is struggling. Here the key word is I'm going to try to implement my deen, right? Mastata'atu, as much as I can. And as much as I'm able to. I have difficulties, but Allah sees me striving. Just like the man who used to drink and the Prophet said, leave him. He loves Allah and his messenger. In his heart, there is true love of Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he is having difficulty. Shaitan is on him and he's trying to figure out how to battle and how to win that war. Right? SubhanAllah. But la ilaha illallah is present in his heart. The issue is when we say la ilaha illallah and it's not really present in our hearts. We are really not people of la ilaha illallah. We may have some hypocrisy. May Allah forbid. May Allah all make us, make us all sincere with la ilaha illallah. Right? But because of that, Ar-Rahim, mashallah, you have your du'as accepted in this life and your du'as for the next life accepted. But for the disbeliever, just because their du'as are accepted doesn't mean Allah is pleased with them. It can be Allah giving them rope to hang themselves with their deviance, right? And their disbelief, 
and their arrogance and everything else that comprises their characteristics and their values. And then he says, if Allah did not show mercy to the disbelievers, if Ar-Rahman did not show mercy to the disbelievers in this life, they would not even be blessed to drink water, right? Or to eat a morsel of food. Allah would have taken all of that away from them, meaning they wouldn't have it existed, right? But Allah allows them to exist because Allah sends them signs. Allah sends the revelation. He sent a revelation to everybody, inshallah ta'ala, right? This is part of Allah's justice, that you will not stand before Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala except that he can say that you have received the message, that he can say that, mashallah, remember this day, this person came and talked to you and this person gave you that. Remember, you lived during the time of Noah and you lived during the time of Isa and you lived during the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they called you and you rejected and you fought against them, right? Subhanallah. Oh, they called you and you accepted, right? Subhanallah, Rabbil Adi. May Allah keep us from those of Iman and always connected to the Quran and Sunnah. Ameen. And because of this, we know that dua can't be made to anything or anyone except Allah, right? And Allah has told us in the Quran in Surah Al-Jinn, verse 20, قُلْ إِنَّمَا عِذْعُ رَبِّي وَلَا أُشْرِكُ بِهِ أَحَدًا Right? Say, O Muhammad, I only supplicate to my Lord and I don't associate any partners alongside with him at all. To make dua to something other than Allah is complete pure shirk, is complete association, right? And giving a partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't matter if you called on Isa, Jesus, it doesn't matter if you call them the stars and the constellation. It doesn't matter if you call them animals. It doesn't matter if you call them the rocks. It doesn't matter if you call them whatever it is that you call them besides Allah. That is pure shirk. That is pure association in giving Allah a partner, a co-equal that he is not deserving of, right? These, these things don't deserve to be on the level of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Why? Because they themselves have been created. And this is why Allah says in the Quran, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi shay. Right? Yushraka bihi. Allah does not forgive that anything shall be associated alongside with him. Wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha. But he will forgive anything less than that to whomever he wills. So Allah is telling the shirk, unforgivable. Any other sin, it's on the list of being forgivable, inshallah, and pardoned. You, it can be pardoned, right? Subhanallah. Allah says, and whoever associates something to Allah, then they have gone extremely astray. Allah mentions the word astray twice, subhanallah. They are so far gone that it is as if they are like in the middle of the jungle, right? SubhanAllah, with no Wi-Fi, no GPS, no compass, right? They don't have no absolute, they don't have any absolute idea which direction there is to safety. SubhanAllah, they're lost completely blind, wondering how do I get out of here and how do I find safety, right? Because they have worshiped and you know, called upon something along with Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And calling upon saints or anything of that nature is even worse, right? Because Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has created these human beings that are, uh, that are right, that, that, that are not flawless, right? These human beings that have many mistakes and errors. Everybody has made some type of mistake throughout their life. There's no perfect human being. You look at it in that long hadith, subhanAllah, that we read today in Sayyid Muslim, that when the, when the people on Yom al they will be seeking intercession, that they're going to be going from prophet to prophet to prophet. They're going to start with Adam and then to Noah, to Ibrahim, to Isa, subhanAllah. The only one who's not going to mention a sin that they have committed was Jesus, the son of Mary. Everybody else will say, subhanAllah, I, done, I did something wrong. And Allah is angry like he's, not, like he's never been angry before. Until they get to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will go and plead to Allah and Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will let him intercede for this ummah, right? SubhanAllah. Other than that, you know, there is no way 
or no reason to call upon anything along with Allah's power. I don't care how righteous they may have been in this world, right? SubhanAllah. The direct connection to Allah is that we pray and supplicate directly to him and not to anything else. We don't need an intermediary, right, to take our du'as and carry our supplications to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because these objects or these people that are being worshipped, they are in their graves and they can't hear the supplications, right? They can't help you in that instance. They can't help themselves in where they are at that moment. Even those who have Muslims who call upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam this way, and that in itself is wrong, right? And incorrect. You hear that they go where he's in his grave, in his masjid, and they'll say, Ya Rasulullah, my wife, she's barren. Help her have a baby. A'udhu billahi min sharri shaitan. Right? We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of shaitan. How are you calling upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he can't help you? Allah is the one who, mashallah, gives life and takes life. Right? So even some Muslims have the concept incorrect and backwards, subhanAllah, due to whatever misguidance they have found within their lives, inshallah ta'ala. Also, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنْ يَدْعُوا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ مَنْ لَا يَسْتَجِيبُ لَهُ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَهُمْ عَنْ دُعَائِهِمْ غَافِلُونَ He says, and who is more astray than the one who makes dua, supplicates the other than Allah, who will not answer him until the day of judgment? And who are even unaware that these du'as are being made to him, right? So Allah is telling us, they can't hear you. They can't benefit you, right? And on the day of resurrection, Allah will tell these people, call upon those who you used to see guidance from and see if they're going to be able to help you. And they're going to say, I can't help you. I don't have anything to do with you today. Even shaitan, we talked about it, right? That with, when, when the amr, when, when Qudi al-Amr, when the Amr is finished, meaning your Qiyam is there, he's going to say, you know what I mean? Don't blame me, blame yourself. I only invited you. Dua, right? This word, this is where uh, that word could be, you're going to see that word dua used as a call and invitation. I invited you, right? And then you chose to do what it is that you did. Don't blame me, blame yourself. I free myself of any association that you made with me with Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, right? So we see that even shaitan will free himself from those individuals who fell for the tricks and the plots. Also, Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَاهًا آخَرْ لَا بُرْهَانَ لَهُ بِي فَإِنَّمَا هِسَابَهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الْكَافِرُونَ He says, and whoever makes dua, supplicates to other than Allah, right? of whom he has no proof for. You have no burhan. You have no proof for worshiping and calling upon this thing other than your desires and shaitan told you to call upon them. But other than that, you don't find it anywhere, right? Because we even find in Christianity, there's nowhere in the Bible that tells you to call upon Jesus, right? SubhanAllah, I remember when I was looking, that was one of the main things I looked for before accepting Islam. Where does Jesus say, worship me, call upon me? He doesn't. He always turns that and throws it back at God, right? God is greater than I. The Father is greater than I. Why thou call me good? The only one good is that one in heaven, right? SubhanAllah, he prostrates himself and he prays to God. He's on the cross. He says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me, right? SubhanAllah, quote, unquote, right? We find that SubhanAllah, Rabbil Azim, you know, that Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala is showing us there is no proof for this. We just make things up as human beings as we go along. SubhanAllah. And it's amazing the way human beings make things up, right? Knock, knock on wood. What is that? <laughs> That's shirk, right? That's a given Allah association of partners saying the wood is going to protect me. Huh? You know, oh, I go and I'm going to do something. I'm going to shoot a basketball. I flip it over three times, you know, because I think this is good luck before I shoot the shot. You know, who told you? Where did you get proof that that was good luck? Where did you get proof that knocking on the on wood was good luck? Where did you get proof that throwing salt over your left shoulder was going to help you? Where did you get proof that hanging the horse hoof or horseshoe over your door was going to be a source of protection? Where do these things come from? Except that human beings themselves make these concepts up and we make ourselves believe because we're seeking comfort. We're seeking to be okay. 
We make ourselves believe that these things are true. Just like when people pass away, right? You find that that this believers, people pass away and they say, oh, they're in a better place now. They're in paradise, they're with their Lord. How do you know that? Who's told you that? Where is the proof for it? Other than that we've invented this over time because I want to feel good within myself. I don't want the hurt and I don't want the pain, subhanahu rabbil azim, right? Even the evil eye, yes, even the evil eye, jazakallah khair, Omar, used by Muslims today, right? Or the eye, the, the eye of ayatul kursi or whatever habit that they hang up in their cars and they hang up the verses of ayatul kursi in the cars or they hang them up in their homes because they believe that they're a protection. Shirk billah, right? That is associating something to Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. Allah is the protector. Allah is the safeguard. Allah is the one who, mashallah, if we call upon him and we make dua, we use the Quran and Sunnah the way he tells us, Bismillah, when we walk into our homes, inshallah ta'ala, Bismillah kharajna. And when we eat and mashallah, when we go to sleep, we make those ad'iyah, those duas, that we'll find protection with Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. But we just can't be, you know, making it up as we go along, inshallah ta'ala, because then we will find that we're going to be put in a bad place. Right, and this is how people go astray. Shaytan, he's like, yeah, it's a good idea. You know, mashallah, hang that thing up. That thing is going to protect you and help you. You know, and you're like, Allahu Akbar, I, I, I don't make, you know, and then people make money off of that stuff, right? Just like the selling of holy water, they make money off of that type of stuff, inshallah, right? So we want to be careful with that type of stuff, inshallah. And then he tells us, inshallah, that surely the disbelievers will not be successful. There is no success for them at all. If they don't accept Islam, if they don't submit to Allah, if they're not from those who, mashallah, for some reason the message did not reach them, and Allah will give them their own test, Yawm al Qiyamah, there won't be any success, inshallah. And Allah knows best. So in the Quran and Sunnah, He says there are two types of du'as du'a al mas'ala and du'a al ibad. Du'a al mas'ala is the du'a of asking, seeking aid, seeking help. Whenever I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, Dua al ibadah the dua of worship, excuse me, is when I praise and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we find that both of these forms of dua are found in Surah Al Fatiha, in Iyaka Na'abud wa Iyaka Nastain. Right? It is you alone who we worship, right? This is that form of dua of ibadah, wa Iyaka Nastain, and it is your help that we seek, Ya Allah, and this is the mas'ala. I'm asking and calling upon Allah, saying, Ya Allah, help me. As we know, the Surah Al-Fatiha, mashallah, is one big beautiful dua, inshallah ta'ala. And alhamdulillah, he says that we must be people who never leave off this spiritual aspect of Islam, right? In Islam, we found that there have been two groups, okay, that we need to be very careful of and cognizant of. One group is extreme on the side of there is no type of spirituality where, well, you know, when we just sit down and we contemplate and we ponder and we reflect and we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they leave it all altogether. Their focus is only creed, right? Aqeedah, 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 belief, 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 creed, 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 the oneness of Allah, tawheed, right? And they leave off the spirituality. So what you find with these individuals, what happens is that they have a lot of external features of the characteristics of what it looks like to be a believer. But internally, they're hurting because they lack that spirituality that existed with the Prophet The Prophet prayed extra prayer. The Prophet prayed at night. May he make us from those who hold on to this. And I know it's difficult, subhanAllah, right? The Prophet would make dua, raise his hand, subhanAllah. The Prophet would make dhikr. He would remind, make the remembrance of Allah, astaghfirullah, alhamdulillah, subhanAllah, hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, subhanAllah, wa bihamdi, subhanAllah, illa bi. Right? He would make all of these duas, these adhkar of remembering Allah and getting the benefit. This is spirituality. So when we say that's not part of Islam, we've left off the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or we haven't delved into it enough to learn it. Then the other extreme on the uh, the polar opposite side is those individuals who they are too spiritual. And then they leave off the issues of creed and belief. And you'll find them that they'll sit in gatherings and they're just, ooh, 
ooh, ooh, and they believe that, you know, do enough of this hooing and saying Allah's name together and, and you know, and, and in sequence with one another that eventually Allah appears to them, right? Yeah, well, may Allah forbid, right? They go into like this trance, right? SubhanAllah. And that also is an extreme that is not found within the Prophet Sallallahu teachings, nor was it found within the teachings of the companions. May Allah be pleased with them, inshallah, all right? Because they are our source. They are our burhat. They are our proof, right? Inshallah ta'ala, our dalil, right? Our proof, inshallah ta'ala, that we go back to those sources to look at, did they do this or did they not do this? Or what did they do? Looking at the Prophet first and then looking at the companions and how they implemented this in their lives. So we want to be careful to stay away from both of these extremes. We are a ummah wasata, right? We are a middle nation, inshallah ta'ala, where alhamdulillah we take from here and we take from here and we make the beautiful balance of what it is to be a believer and a person of faith and a person of iman, inshallah ta'ala, right? And he says, because the person who leaves off spirituality, right, they become just a person who does a series of mundane acts that are devoid of any meanings, performed at regular intervals, meaning that subhanAllah, I'm not really that spiritual, I'm not into that spiritual stuff. So when I pray, when I make dua, when I do these things, they really don't have any connection, any meaning, and may Allah protect us and, and, and allow us not to be from these categories, subhanAllah. Right, so I do them and I'm not really in it. I do it just because I know I have to, but my mind is not there, right? And if that is you, inshallah ta'ala, I don't want you to bug out and freak out like, oh my God, that's me. What am I going to do? You know, keep working at it, right? Don't have a defeatist mindset, inshallah ta'ala. Keep working at it. You, re you recognize the problem. You recognize the issue. Now work at it one prayer at a time. Work at it one supplication at a time, inshallah ta'ala, where you begin to develop that spirituality within yourself. And that will give you that dhaqa, you know, that taste of iman, right? right? They will taste the sweetness of faith. The one who was pleased with Allah's is Lord Muhammad is in Islam as his way of life, inshallah ta'ala, right? So we know that iman, faith has a taste that is sweet, inshallah ta'ala, and we want to chase after that. And it is found within spirituality, right? It is found within your creed and your belief system, inshallah ta'ala, in that perfect balance of mashallah iman and we end today inshallah ta'ala with a beautiful dua that the shaykh gives us inshallah ta'ala and he ended as well by saying um you know can we ask for the good things of this world because many of us we believe that you know we have to be people who um in order to be religious i have to be poor in order to be religious i can't have the good fine things in this life in order to be religious, I have to show a meekness and a humility. My beard has to be disheveled. You know what I mean? My hair has to be out. My clothes need to be tattered, inshallah ta'ala, because it shows that I have a dedication, right? Some type of monkism or whatever have you to be, right? And that's not the case. That's not the case. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala on the tongue of his messenger says that Allah loves to see the barakah, the blessing, the fadl, the bounties of of, uh, upon his slave, right? His blessings and mountains upon his slave. And if he has given it to you, alhamdulillah, there's nothing wrong with it, right? But again, remaining on that middle course where you're not going to the extreme of mashallah, you're just going all out. And then you're not going to the extreme where you're not doing anything and not taking care of yourself at all. You're just looking like, you know, like 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 you're homeless because you're, for you're forcing yourself to live that type of a life. And there's nothing wrong with mashallah having a meek life if that is something that you choose. If you want to be that person that only has, you know, two pair of pants and two shirts and you wash them every two days, alhamdulillah, that's a choice that you make, alhamdulillah. And you can make that choice if that is something that you think that is going to raise your spirituality, keep you connected and keep you protected from the world, inshallah ta'ala. If you know that, alhamdulillah, I can buy the finer things in life because Allah has given it to me and those things don't affect my mindset and don't affect my heart, then inshallah ta'ala, you can have that as well. Right, Abu Bakr was rich. Earth man had money, he had wealth, inshallah ta'ala. Right, Imam Malik, he had wealth, right? You had a lot of the righteous and a lot of scholars, inshallah ta'ala, past and present who had money and had wealth, but they used it in the sake of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, right? And to take care of their families and themselves as well, inshallah ta'ala. And then you had those who were poor, subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? 
just like Abu Huraira who used to be from Ahlul Sufa, used to be from the 70 or so, they used to live in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu who, mashallah, didn't know when the next meal or plate was going to come from him, uh, to them, but subhanAllah, he was one of, subhanAllah, the companions on a higher level that has re related uh, some of the most hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he was always in the company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he sacrificed and strove, right, and gave up the dunya for something else. And that's okay, right? So we have those personal choices, inshallah ta'ala, and then we just balance between those things, inshallah ta'ala, and Allah ta'ala knows best. So lastly, the dua that he gives us in the Quran is in Ali Imran, verses 193 to 195, where he says, He says, our Lord forgive us and remit from us our evil deeds and cause us to die. Die in a state of iman. No, oh, sorry, the, the English is a little different. This one, uh, our Lord, we heard a caller. I'm sorry, because the the, the seemed like one of the verses got really cut, uh, cut off. We heard a caller inviting to the way of Islam, right, and saying, "Believe in your Lord, and we have believed." Rabbana faghfir lana dhunubana wa kafir anna sayyatina. So this is that part now that the Ingeri raised. Our Lord, forgive our sins and remit from us our evil deeds and cause us to die in a state of righteousness. So we begin by saying, yeah, Allah, I heard the call, the invitation, right? I heard the caller, calling and inviting to Iman. Inviting to believe and aminu berabikum to believe in your Lord. For amanna, I believed Allah. I submitted. I've said la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. I'm taking the steps, inshallah, ta'ala, trying to come close to you. And you said, if I walk to you, you run to me, inshallah. Right? Subhanallah. Right? For, forgive me my sins. Remove from me my evil deeds and let me die with tawaffa na mahal Let me die with the righteous, right? And he says, Rabbana atina ma wa'attana ala rasulika wala tukhzina yawm al qiyamah. O Allah, O our Lord, grant us what you have promised through your messengers, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being of them, right? And do not disgrace us on the day of judgment, right? For you never break your promise. You never break your promise, Ya Allah. I'm asking you to give us that which you promised your messenger, inshaAllah. Right? And that the Lord responds to them and says, I will never deny any of you, Allah. I will never deny any of you, be he male or female, the good deeds that they have done. SubhanAllah. So we see this beautiful dua again that is found in Ali Imran, verse 193 to 195, that is worthy of us memorizing, worthy of us just reading if we can't memorize that we, mashallah, annotate it somewhere. And we read this within the supplications that we want to read throughout the day and night. And I suggest that inshallah ta'ala, one of the things that you can do, inshallah, is that you can make a little notebook for yourself. And you can use that notebook, inshallah ta'ala, with those prayers in it, inshallah ta'ala, and just make those prayers on a day-to-day -day basis, inshallah ta'ala. The ones that really touch your heart, the ones that really affect your soul, inshallah, the ones that you really love, and then just make it, mashallah, uh, a habit that you do this. I remember my grandmother, subhanAllah, who, you know, subhanAllah, may, you know, she she never wanted to hear about Islam and she was very old when I accepted Islam. I, I lacked wisdom, I lacked knowledge, you know, so she, I don't believe she received the message appropriately. Um, not for me anyway, subhanAllah, I was just uh, weak uh, and incapable at that time, um, subhanAllah, to convey a, a, a message the way it needed to be conveyed. And, you know, I used to watch her and she would pray and supplicate at least one hour to two hours throughout her day. 11, 12 o'clock would come, she says, don't bother me. She would go into her room. She would kneel down by her bed and she'd begin to supplicate. And she had a notebook and in that notebook, she had people's names, her friends, her families, her coworkers, you know, people that she loved and she would pray for all of those people, subhanAllah. And you know, me now thinking about this as a Muslim, 
that was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful concept, right? Something that we should have in Islam, that we are making dua for each other and thinking about one another that way, inshallah, and that we're taking the time out to supplicate to our the, the inner Looks like we lost the imam. Um, we'll wait for him to try to log back in, inshallah. Sorry, I don't know what happened. I got kicked out of the room, subhanAllah. Uh, uh, yeah, I saw that, but uh, I don't know what happened either. <laughs> I'm back, subhanAllah. I have no idea what happened, inshallah. Um, but alhamdulillah, you know, that, that is a concept that Islamically, inshallah, we should try to also hold on to and allow that to be part of our lives, inshallah. So with this, I lost whatever questions were in the, in the chat. So Abdul Rashid, if you can help me out. Um, if there are any questions that were in the chat because I just came back in, um, I don't see them. So if you if there's anything there, you can go ahead and read them out to me, or you can actually go ahead and raise your hands, inshallah ta'ala, and inshallah ta'ala, um, you know, ask the question personally, or you can go ahead and rewrite your new question in the chat, um, inshallah. No, there's nothing in the chat. Okay, okay. Inshallah. So one says, can we please close with a dua for healing of the sick, inshallah ta'ala. Um, inshallah ta'ala. Make you do you mean make dua for uh, the people who are sick? Is this uh what we're asking for, inshallah? Yes, okay, inshallah ta'ala. Definitely we can close out with that, inshallah ta'ala. Um, so, we, um uh, so to we're talking about the uh, the sweetness of the iman and uh, I remember when I was a kid and I was uh, going to church and I was trying to get saved and, you know, trying to feel that that Holy Spirit that you see the everybody else seems to have had, but seems to keep missing me. And, even, of course, that's one of the reasons why I came to this one, because mm -hmm. uh, I kept, you know, I, I, I thought I believed that I was doing right, but I wasn't getting the same, you know, return from from God. So mm -hmm. that these other people were getting in, of course, we know we could debate about how really how fake that is, but nevertheless. I always felt like, you know, why isn't God giving me that? And then fast forward to now, so even even like now, so sometimes, you know, my prayer, I know my prayer is not 100% right because I don't have full concentration for sure, but I know that um, for me, it's just about taking my time and usually like up, up until a couple of weeks ago, I used to love doing Fezre in the morning by myself. But now I've even learned to go to, uh, you know, I've made a routine to go into the mass shit in the morning. And I feel like I even feel better when I'm with the brothers. Um, so, you know, it's just about, you know, you got to keep working. Like you said, you got to keep working at it. You know, it's not something you just you just turn on and turn off. And we all have, you know, our, our level of the iman goes up and down and up and down um, from day to day, the minute to minute, to hour to hour. So you just have to keep, like you said, you just have to keep, keep at it and, uh, you know. I remind myself and remind you guys you just got to keep at it and you know that's just you know that's just the beauty of uh of, 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 the, of the dean absolutely <laughs> alhamdulillah you know uh there's that statement fake it until you make it <laughs> uh, <laughs> and i say that that's you <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying that you know some of some of us may be at that level where you know we are legit struggling man uh, where we legitimately are still trying to figure it all out um, and nobody says that you have to have it all together, right? Uh, nobody's saying that. Um, Allah hasn't told us that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi hasn't told us that, right? Um, but as Allah says, you know, فجاهد, right? Strive. And, and, and the one who strives, that striving is for you. That is for you. That is for yourself, inshallah, Allah tells us, right? So meaning, you know, work, sacrifice, and strive. 
and put in those steps. Um, and, and, and Allah is not asking for a lot. And this is why we mention often, you know, frequent, you know, Allah loves those things which are small but consistent, right? So mashallah, like Abdul Rashid mentioned, you know, getting up for Fajr on time, you know I mean? That's, a, that's an accomplishment. You know, and then mashallah Abdul Rashid took it further. He says, okay, now I'm gonna make, go to the masjid inshallah and make it in the masjid inshallah, right? Mashallah, and that mashallah, it's, it's, it's a beautiful accomplishment, right? That you add, Right to your worship and to your routine, inshallah ta'ala. And that begins to increase your faith. It begins to help you out. It begins to aid you. Um, it puts you in a better place, inshallah ta'ala. And you have to take those small wins, right? You have to take those small wins. Um, don't look past those small wins as if, ah, that was, okay, alhamdulillah, but it, it wasn't enough. No, mashallah, it was a win. Alhamdulillah, take that. You know, be proud of it. You know, I mean, I'm gonna celebrate it within yourself, inshallah. Good job. You know, mashallah. You know, keep up the good work. You know, don't be discontent because you think that oh, it was something super small, right? No, alhamdulillah. Be content that you accomplished that, and then find the next little thing that you can accomplish, and find the next little thing that you can accomplish, and you'll see that those little things go building, inshallah, and they become mountains if we keep working at it, inshallah. To Allah. So I, I agree with you 100%. Uh, the Rashid, mashallah, may Allah reward you for uh, sharing that with us and expressing that. Uh, Omar here, he put a hadith from the Messenger of Allah, Abu Huraira reported that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Allah, the Almighty says, I am as my servant expects me to be, and I am with him as if as he remembers me. If he remembers me within himself, I will remember him within myself. And if he mentions me in a gathering, I will mention him in a greater gathering, meaning among the Malaika. When he draws near to me by the span of a hand, I draw near to him by the length of a cubit. And when he draws near to me by the length of a cubit, I draw near to him by the length of a fathom. And when he comes to me walking, I come to him running. And this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari, right? Mashallah. And he says that this reminds him of the Rashid's reflection, reminds him of this hadith, right? That efforts that seem small, are multiplied by him, subhanahu rabbi al-adhim, inshallah ta'ala. So inshallah, um, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Omar, jazakallah khair for sharing that beautiful hadith, uh, alhamdulillah. Um, also, uh, we're asked here, what should we read for the next session? We're reading about 35 pages. They're about 32, 30 to 35 pages is, is kind of the read, uh, inshallah ta'ala, for the next class. But we'll go ahead. I'll have everything uh, hopefully done by this Saturday and, and sent out to you. Inshallah, ta'ala, our admins has emailed everything out um, to those who are present, inshallah, ta'ala, and taking the classes, inshallah. Um, Omar says, and do not compare ourselves to others and how they are doing or what is apparent from what they're doing unless it serves as motivation, but not to beat ourselves down. Yeah, and this is a very important point. Jazakallah khair, Omar, for pointing that out, right? This is a very important point. And this is why the Prophet says, look behind, don't look in front, right? Because when you look behind, you look at those who have less than you, you appreciate where you are, right? If you look at the new Muslim who comes to the door, and then you who may be five months in, seven months in, a year in, and you see how the new Muslim is struggling, and then you see, man, I've memorized Fatiha, I've memorized some alphabets, I've done this, I've done that. You know, you get to appreciate what Allah has given you that far, plus far, right? But if you look at, mashallah, the Muslim who is 30 years in and they're working and they're grinding, it's like, oh my God, I'm falling short of the mark, right? You know, I'm never going to catch up, you know, oh my God, what am I going to do that? They have 30 years ahead of you, mashallah, or they have a lifetime because they were born Muslim ahead of you, you know what I mean? SubhanAllah, don't look at that. You know what I mean, inshallah ta'ala. Look at what you can do, right, inshallah ta'ala, where you are. Look at those who have less than you, inshallah ta'ala. Not to kind of, because you're looking at them as less than, but it helps to just kind of appreciate where you've, where you've gotten to in this journey, inshallah ta'ala. And then the same as Brother Omar mentioned, that if you look ahead, you look ahead as motivation, as if, you know, one day I would like to be like that, or one day I would like to accomplish this or accomplish that, inshallah ta'ala. And then you put the steps forward to work to accomplishing those things that you want to accomplish within that journey, inshallah ta'ala. But yeah, don't take on that defeatist mindset uh, or, you know, take on that I have to meet up to the standard of Sheikh so-and-so or brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so, inshallah ta'ala, because maybe you won't be that, you know, person or live up to that standard, inshallah ta'ala. But Allah has blessed you, right? Allah has given each and every one of us something very special, right? And the Prophet said, every person knows their worth, 
right? So knowing your worth is important, right? Because you know your strengths and you know your weaknesses. You know what you can take advantage of. Mashallah is going to help you to elevate yourself in this faith, right? And you know what you need to leave off, which inshallah ta'ala may cause you to, you know, digress in the faith inshallah ta'ala, right? And that may not be what Sheikh so-and-so is doing, right? You may, you may not be the person who mashallah is the faqih, the mashallah, the scholar of fiqh and language and the, and the likes. You may be a person who mashallah is amazing at charity, right? SubhanAllah, and that is your angle, right? You may be a person who's amazing at helping people. That may be your angle. You may be amazing at X, Y, Z, and that is your angle. And you use that which Allah has gifted you with to bring you closer to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the person who is intelligent. The person who has wisdom in his wife is the one who can see within themselves what Allah has blessed me with and how can I use that to get closer to him, inshallah ta'ala, and build up, you know what I mean, those mountains of good deeds for myself rather than chasing after something that Allah may have not blessed me with, inshallah ta'ala. And Allah ta'ala knows best, inshallah. Anyone else that wants to, you know, add, reflect, share? And if you can't unmic yourself, you can raise your hand and he will unmic you as well, inshallah. Ta'ala. I'm just going to say, uh, Salam alaikum. I have to go in the Arab. Another meeting I got to get to. No problem, Darshi. Jazakal khair. Allah bless you. Allah yafal. Allah yafal. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone Here online, we have any suggestions of how to increase your khushur and salah. The Prophet ﷺ and the companions, they used to tell us, inshallah ta'ala, pray your prayer as, as if it is your last prayer, right? This is one of the ways of increasing your khushur, uh, Brother Miguel. Um, you know, that when you pray that prayer, you may you pray that prayer as, I may not get another, right? This may be it. Why? Because it's Isha time and I'm going to sleep. I may not wake up in the morning. I'm not promised to wake up, right? SubhanAllah. It's Fajr time. I may get in my car. Allah knows best Allah protect me and my family. But I don't know what's going to happen on my way to work and throughout my day, right? SubhanAllah. You know, I may not make it back home. I may not make it to the door, right? I may not make it to Asr. I may not make it to Maghrib, right? So praying that prayer as this may be my last one, right? And if you go into praying that way, because you, you'll find SubhanAllah, that when people, subhanAllah, are sick, that this is the time that you find the most humility, right? Especially when you have like terminal illnesses or you know that you're going to die. You know, there's a sincerity in that, subhanAllah, that comes out of those individuals or even people when they get old. You'll find that older people, subhanAllah, like the older brothers and sisters, they be in the masjid all the time, right? SubhanAllah, you be like, subhanAllah, how do, they, how do they do this, right? But it's just because they had another realization point in their life that I don't have time left, right? So they find this humbleness and this connection and this khushur, right? This being present of mind, body, and soul um, because they understand that this may be my last one, right? So when we pray with this may be my last one, then Allah wa ta'ala will help us to find that khushur. And you got to really try to empty your mind, right? Now, I've mentioned this before in previous classes, you know, um, Sometimes making the, the, the sunnah prayer before, inshallah ta'ala, helps to kind of begin emptying the mind, calling the adhan helps to begin emptying the mind, making wudu helps to begin emptying the mind, inshallah. So that when you go into the prayer, you're not thinking about your kids, you're not thinking about the food, you're not thinking about what you have to do tomorrow, you're not thinking about work. You just want those five minutes, inshallah ta'ala, that you want to pray. You want your mind to be clear and on Allah. And there's times where you're going to, you know, your mind is going to shift and it's going to jump to something else. But you catch yourself. Oh, I'm shifted. Let me come back, right? SubhanAllah. Let me come back and refocus, right? Alhamdulillah. So it's a constant, you know, battle and struggle with yourself to stay focused. Know, right, that Allah, right? You pray as if you can see Allah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, right? You pray as if you can see him, knowing that you can't see him, but he is watching you. He is listening to you. He is hearing you, right? Right, subhanAllah, as if you were standing in front of the most important person in this world, you would give them your complete attention, right? You wouldn't turn away and ignore them, right? SubhanAllah, but Allah is present, right? With his knowledge, inshallah ta'ala, he's hearing, he's listening, he's seeing, right? So use these methods, inshallah ta'ala, and hopefully 
there are methods that uh, help out, especially knowing that this may be your last prayer in a multi-alum <laughs> Um, Brother Daniel said, mashallah, good advice about using our strengths. Um, Zakhla khair, um, private message, also learning what you are saying in Arabic and English. Yes, learning what you're saying in Arabic and English is key, right? Because again, it's not just about repeating words, right? But it's about knowing what you're saying. So this is why I said, if you have a notebook, right? Especially for like your supplications and you have the Arabic and you have the English and so I'll tell you saying it in the Arabic, you're reading it in the English. And eventually you're going to end up memorizing both, right? Because you've done it so much so often. Even whatever you've memorized of the small little uh, surahs in the Quran, chapters in the Quran that you're reciting in prayer, um, especially surah al-Fatiha, that you read the English, read it often, right? So that when you're reciting with these prayers, inshallah ta'ala, you know what you're saying, inshallah ta'ala, you know what you're talking about, inshallah ta'ala, um, or you have that summary, at least, of what is is talking about, and this allows you to be connected in your prayer as well. Um, and this is the advice that they're giving privately as well, inshallah ta'ala, which is a great advice, inshallah. Taib, anything else? Uh, Brother Daniel says, if there's time, can you talk about the persistence of dua, like not giving up after making dua for something once, twice, thrice, a million times, etc. So yeah, so alhamdulillah, um, you know, one of the things that we have to understand about dua, about supplication is that um, every dua may not necessarily be answered, right? Every dua may not necessarily be answered, meaning I may make a dua for a certain thing and maybe Allah never gives that to me. Right? Does it mean though I, I, I stop asking for it? Doesn't mean I have to stop asking for it. I can continue asking for it. Or perhaps maybe it is that Allah has given me something better in place of it, right? So I have to kind of also look at that, right? Maybe I'm asking for something that really Allah knows that if I had it, it wouldn't be good for me, right? Does it mean Allah didn't want to answer me? No, right? It doesn't mean that sometimes we look at it, oh my God, I asked for this thing and Allah has answered me. I'm doomed. None of my prayers are being answered. No, right? It could mean that Allah legitimately knows that that is not good for you or wouldn't be good for you. So he doesn't give it to you because he doesn't want you to be ruined by it, right? SubhanAllah. Or you have the other angle up. Allah withholds it because he knows that on the day of judgment, you're going to need it. You're going to need this specific supplication probably answered. And he'll say to you, oh, my slave, my servant, remember when you asked me for such and such and I didn't give it to you? Well, alhamdulillah, I've saved that for today. And I'm answering it today and giving it to you today, inshallah ta'ala, by means of X, Y, and Z, right? So alhamdulillah, you know, don't look at it as, you know, my prayer is not being answered. Don't look at it as I'm, I'm doomed. Just try to find the wisdom, right, behind those things. And then sometimes you may not find the wisdom and then you just continue to pray for that, you know. And I can tell you, subhanAllah, um, you know, I remember, again, uh, me being in the University of Medina and praying, should I come home, right? Should I come home? Me making the istikhar, I made istikhar numerous times, right? Should I come home? My wife was telling me, don't come home, stay, right? But my mind, I was worried, right? I'm worried, 9-11, everything is happening. There's too, much thing, too many things going on. I'm scared for the faith of my family, right? And, I, and I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying. And subhanAllah, uh, I'm just seeing things, you know, being blocked and blocked and blocked and blocked, you know. And it becomes difficult sometimes to be able to read all of that, you know. And sometimes you just make a move and, and, and hope that the move that you make is the best move, inshallah ta'ala. And Allah continues to help and aid you in that. And alhamdulillah, you know, Allah helps and he aids you in those things, inshallah ta'ala. Maybe not when you want it. But what he knows is best for you. It's like I was telling my wife the other night, you know, if in 1998, when I was going to the imams, I would go to the mansion, I would drive them crazy. You know, oh, send me somewhere, send me to Syria, send me to Jordan, send me to Saudi Arabia, send me somewhere, I want to go study, right? And I would go there all of the time, driving them crazy. You know, they used to tell me, just be patient, throw us out, be patient, be patient, come to the classes, be patient, come to the classes, we got you. You know, and I'm, and I'm going, but send me, but send me, smile. Then 2001, right? Three years later, I get accepted to University of Medina. Seven months later, I end up coming back home because of 9-11, right? 
I don't go into the university again until 2005, 2006, right? End of 2005, beginning of 2006 again, right? Four years afterwards, right? So from 1998 to 2006, that's eight years of me asking Allah, Ya Allah, send me to study. Ya Allah, allow me to learn this religion. Ya Allah, you know, give me the means. Ya Allah, you know, I, I didn't even want to go out. I, I will start college for something secular and wouldn't be able to finish that. My wife would say, stop it already. <laughs> you know, you keep cutting off the classes. Just go study Islam. That's where your heart is, right? SubhanAllah. But it took eight years for that dua to be answered. You know, and then I didn't graduate to 2012. I took a long route, six years, right? SubhanAllah. But Allah eventually answered that dua for me, right? But it took time. It took patience. And at the same time, sometimes it's Allah testing you to see, do you really want this? You know, are you really going to stay consistent and striving for it, inshallah ta'ala? Or are you just saying, I want this, but you're not really going to work for it, right? SubhanAllah, right? Eight years. It took me eight years to be able to study, right? To begin my studies officially, subhanAllah. It took me, you know, I mean, uh, four, 12, right? Eight plus six, right? Was that 10, 12? 12 years to officially study and finish my studies and having a BA, inshallah ta'ala. And pleading with Allah all that way, inshallah ta'ala, right? And, and the journey is still not over, right? Because the journey continues until you pass away, inshallah ta'ala. But I'm just using this as an example to you guys of, you know, dua may not be answered right away. And you just need time, inshallah ta'ala. Um, Brother Omar, he says, a year ago, I was begging Allah to help me learn how to read the Quran. And alhamdulillah, today I see myself living that answered dua. And I'm still striving but I wouldn't have been able to receive all of that ability from Allah immediately. He answered the dua by putting me through a process, right? And the power of istikhara, Allahu Akbar, right? And that's amazing, mashallah, right? And, that, and that's how, mashallah, you know that, you know, the test is real. You know that sincerity is real. You know that, subhanAllah, you just have to keep working at it, inshallah, to keep asking for it, inshallah. So, I'm sorry, one moment. Abdul Samad in the class. Let me call you back in five minutes. Okay, okay so I'm cool. Sorry, that's about tomorrow's khutbah, inshallah. Um, here um, in private, they said, uh, I made dua for her son for over 10 years, right? SubhanAllah. So the sister said she made dua that Allah bless her with her son for ten, over 10 years before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed her with her son. And I know the sister. And uh, the son was a complete surprise, right? <laughs> Nobody knew that he was coming, inshallah ta'ala. So alhamdulillah, you know, mashallah the, mashallah, the need to stay consistent with dua, inshallah. Brother Daniel says, mashallah, for the both of you, Allah wa'alam, and he is the best of planners, definitely. Definitely, Allah is definitely the best of planners. And then another private message says, sometimes our intention isn't right, and Allah answers our dua when our intention is set right. No. So yeah, sometimes we may not be ready for that dua, right? We may not be ready for that dua to be answered because maybe we, we, we're not in the right place at that time. But then Allah answers it when he knows we're in the right place, inshallah ta'ala. And Brother Omar says, I mean, and for you and all of us to the dua of <coughs> Brother uh, Daniel, inshallah ta'ala. Um, anything else in this last minute, inshallah ta'ala, we're already at 9.09. I don't want to keep everybody too late, inshallah. May Allah bless you all and always keep you in his favor. I mean... No. Tayyip. So then inshallah ta'ala will end and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the one who heals completely and perfectly, the one who has the power to heal all sicknesses, the one who has the power to bring complete health back to those individuals who are sick, who are struggling, who are, you know, who are hurting, who are in pain, who are, you know, having to go into surgery, surgery or who have went into surgery, those who may have uh, Ill terminal illnesses that they're battling, inshallah ta'ala, those who may have COVID, we ask, Ya Allah, you being the complete healer, inshallah ta'ala, Ya Allah, heal them completely and perfectly, Ya Allah, with a healing that does not leave behind any trail of sickness or ailment. We ask, Ya Allah, allow this sickness, allow this trial, allow this affliction, this difficulty, whatever it is that they're being afflicted with of a test in this life, Allah, allow them to realize that it is a test. Allow it to be the thing that brings them closer to you. Allow it to be the thing that allows them to stay consistently making du'a to you. Allow it to be the thing that, alhamdulillah, reminds them 
of their goal and their purpose in this life, and that is seeking your pleasure, worshiping you, Ya Allah, seeking your love, Ya Allah, seeking your mercy, seeking your forgiveness, Ya Allah, rain that down upon them, Ya Allah, as you have promised, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, the tongue of your messenger, that nothing afflicts the believer, Ya Allah, except that they are being freed and liberated from their sins and their shortcomings, Ya Allah. So liberate them, Ya Allah, and free them, Ya Allah, for whatever pain they're feeling, whatever sickness that they're going through, Ya Allah, until they meet you. And so that when they meet you, Ya Allah, they are completely free of all sin, free of all shortcomings, Ya Allah, and that there is nothing but a clean and pure heart, Ya Allah, that you grant mercy to and that you enter into the highest level of paradise, Ya Allah. Allow us to be, Ya Allah, from those who, MashaAllah, are always making dua for our brothers and sisters who are sick and who are ill, and for those who are not, Ya Allah. Make us from those who think of one another, Ya Allah. Make us from those who are like the Prophet who say, Ummati, Ummati, my nation, my nation, Ikhwani, Ikhwani, Akhawati, Akhawati, my brothers, my brothers, my sisters, my sisters. Ya Allah, make us from those who love one another, Ya Allah, those who earn your love, Ya Allah, and those who are loved by you, Ya Allah, because of the love that we have for you and the love that we have for one another, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask, Ya Allah, for the family members of those who are sick as well, Ya Allah, grant them patience, Ya Allah, allow them to find patience, Ya Allah, allow them to find solace, allow them to find tranquility and ease in you, Ya Allah, in your book, in the Quran, in the words of your Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in those du'as that he specifically has taught us, Ya Allah, uh, through the revelation that you have given to him, Ya Allah, so that they, inshallah ta'ala, can maneuver that very difficult situation that they are in. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Jazakum Allahu khayran, barakallahu fikum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with all of you. And inshallah ta'ala, until the next class, <coughs> may the peace and blessings of Allah be with you all. Thank you.